Hello, and welcome to the Demoet series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. In this Demoet, we demonstrate single table database caching. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining single table database caching and outlining its importance for our customers. Next, we walk through a very basic demo of single table database caching. Finally, we summarize the contents of this demoette. Let's begin by discussing what single table database caching is and why it is important for our customers. TDV caching enables data from virtual views and procedures to be materialized to a wide range of relational database targets. When a view is cached, its data is physically stored on the cache target. When end users access the view, TDV retrieves data from the cache rather than from the primary physical data sources. When a procedure is cached, the results produced by specific input parameters, which are called variants, are physically stored on the cache target whenever a new variant is executed. When subsequent users request the same variant, TDV retrieves data from the cache rather than execute the actual procedure. Cached views and procedures may be low-level replicas of physical data sources, or they may be higher-level abstractions of federated data from many physical data sources. Developers and administrators may configure cache refresh requirements in a highly granular manner. By default, the full cache is refreshed. Incremental caching is also possible, however, it is beyond the scope of this demoette. TDV offers three mechanisms for caching, file-based, single-table, and multi-table. In general, single-table caching is the go-to choice for most needs. With single-table caching, cached data is stored in a relational database product of the customer's choice. This contrasts with file-based caching, where cached data is stored in a delimited flat file. File-based caching is generally appropriate for development, but is seldom used in production because it cannot leverage important features provided by relational databases, such as indexing. In addition, single-table caching stores cache data in one relational table. This contrasts with multi-table caching, which uses a group of tables in round-robin fashion when the cache is refreshed. Multi-table caching can be useful when indexing is heavily used because it reduces the time needed for index maintenance as expired data is deleted. However, multi-table caching is slightly more complex to set up and administer. Caching is important to our customers for two reasons. First, it is useful when end users need the fastest possible response times but are less concerned about data latency. Second, it is useful if access to certain physical data sources is restricted. For example, some administrators of transaction-centric database applications may not want to permit data analysts to add load to their applications during normal business hours. In these cases, TDV can refresh its cache during non-business hours and enable access for data analysts during business hours without stressing the original physical data source. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo that shows the use of single-table database caching. Here is the business problem that we illustrate in this demo. The administrator of an OLTP database of customer activity does not permit data analysts to access the database during peak business hours. Therefore, we want TDV to cache data during off hours and serve data to the analysts via the cache. This demo does not require pre-installation of any car files or other resources. We build it end-to-end -to, -end to show how simple it is to use caching with TDV. Therefore, the only preparation you need to do is delete any artifacts you may have created if you have run this demo previously. If you have run this demo before, delete the cache target data source as well as the cached view. You may also want to delete the physical database you created on your cache target. You can use the management tools for that database to do the deletion. Now we are ready to begin our demo. 
we begin by creating a new database for our cache target. This is not required. It is perfectly acceptable to store caches on an existing database. However, the separate database makes our demo more self-contained. For this demo ad, we use MySQL as our RDBMS. We create a new database called Cache Target. Note that we do not need to define any tables in this database. Now that we have defined a database for our Cache Target, we must tell TDV about it. We create a new data source that matches our Cache Target which in this case is MySQL. We name the data source and supply connection information. Now we can click Create and Close because there are no tables on the database that we need to introspect. Our cache database requires two management tables called the Status Table and the Tracking Table. TDV so uses these tables to manage all cached views and procedures that we create on the cache target. Let's define these tables next. We open the cache target data source. The caching panel has fields for these management tables. We select Browse for the status table. We'll use the default name for the status table, which is Cache Status. When we click Create, TDV shows us the DDL it will use to create the table. We click Execute, and TDV creates the table. We define the tracking table in a similar way. We select Browse for the tracking table. We'll use the default name for the tracking table, which is Cache Tracking. When we click Create, TDV shows us the DDL it will use to create the table. We click Execute, and TDV creates the table. We save our work, and our cache target is now ready. Now we are ready to create a view that we want to cache. We'll create a new view by simply dragging the existing composite view artifact from the TDV examples folder. We use the grid panel to define our projection. We have named our view View to Cache. We go to the caching panel and click Create Cache. We select Single Table Caching and then click Browse in order to find our cache target database. We browse to our cache target data source and select it. Now that we have selected the cache target, we can define a specific cache table for this view. We click Browse, name our table, and click Create. TDV builds the DDL needed to create the table on the cache target and our cache table is created. Now the cache is ready to be populated. For this demoette, we will simply use manual refresh mode. We enable the cache, save our work, and click Refresh Now. When loading is complete, the cache status changes to Up. A lightning bolt appears next to the view in the Studio namespace, to show that this view is cached. When we execute the view, the execution plan now shows the TDV is accessing the data from the cache rather than from the original physical data source. Our demo is complete. Let's summarize what we have seen in this presentation. TDV caching enables data from virtual views and procedures to be materialized to a wide range of relational database targets. When a view is cached, its data is physically stored on the cached target. When end users access the view, TDV retrieves data from the cache rather than from the primary physical data source. When a procedure is cached, the results produced by specific input parameters, which are called variants, are physically stored on the cached target whenever a new variant is executed. When subsequent users request the same variant, TDV retrieves data from the cache rather than execute the actual procedure. Cached views and procedures may be low-level replicas of physical data sources, or they may be higher-level abstractions of federated data from many physical data sources. 
Developers and administrators may configure cache refresh requirements in a highly granular manner. By default, the full cache is refreshed. Incremental caching is also possible. However, it is beyond the scope of this demoette. TDV offers three mechanisms for caching, file-based, single-table, and multi-table. In general, single-table caching is the go-to choice for most needs. With single-table caching, cached data is stored in a relational database product of the customer's choice. This contrasts with file-based caching, where cached data is stored in a delimited flat file. File-based caching is generally appropriate for development, but is seldom used in production because it cannot leverage important features provided by relational databases, such as indexing. In addition, single-table caching stores cache data in one relational table. This contrasts with multi-table caching, which uses a group of tables in round-robin fashion when the cache is refreshed. Multi-table caching can be useful when indexing is heavily used because it reduces the time needed for index maintenance as expired data is deleted. However, multi-table caching is slightly more complex to set up and administer. Caching is important to our customers for two reasons. First, it is useful when end users need the fastest possible response times, but are less concerned about data latency. Second, it is useful if access to certain physical data sources is restricted. For example, some administrators of transaction-centric database applications may not want to permit data analysts to add load to their applications during normal business hours. In these cases, TDV can refresh its cache during non-business hours and enable access for data analysts during business hours without stressing the original physical data source. Thank you.